now. And this is my world now. My name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. A little over 10 years ago, I got this crazy idea to produce a film about wolves where I live here in Arizona. Little did I know, it would launch me into this career as a wildlife filmmaker. It took me seven years and a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but I managed to produce a full hour documentary on the critically endangered Mexican gray wolf. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to see the film. However, in all of the years of filming, I never saw them in the wild without working with a biologist. Kind of hard to do when there are fewer than 100 in the entire state. So ever since then, I've always wanted to come back to the White Mountains of Arizona and try to find them on my own. This is that story. Put your hand in my hand, darling, say go. Keep your eyes on the horizon, stay go. All I need. You know, park my butt down on this little chair I brought and uh, see what we can't find. If anything, I'll be able to film these cattle. <laughs> as long as they don't come to me, I hate cows. Growing up, I was terrified of cows, weirdly enough. Thanks to my old pops for uh, standing outside the window where my crib was and moving like a cow and he did a terrible job of it, but I, I thought it was for sure it was a cow going to come and get me. Prior to this particular trip, I spent countless hours researching how wolves use the landscape, using publicly available information from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I decided to try my luck in an area where wolves have been present in the past, so I set up all of my gear and got the camera ready. It's a fair amount of gear to lug around, roughly 70 pounds or so in all. So I don't recommend doing that too often. It was a fairly windy day, and I hoped it wouldn't cause an issue with my scent blowing directly into the open meadow and preventing any chance of filming anything. All that was left to do is sit and wait and hope I picked the right time and place. I was very hopeful, but at the same time, with fewer than 100 total wolves here in Arizona, I wasn't expecting too much. So I made the most of the time by filming some of the cattle, landscapes, and anything that happened to walk or fly in front of my lens. But it's definitely a waiting game. Well, nothing's shown up yet, so i um, been sitting here for an hour or so. Probably gonna sit here for another three. Um, probably won't see anything, but I have filmed a couple of vultures and a few. Actually, there was a, a crow, I think, or actually it's a raven. Um, looked like it was hunting grasshoppers in the grass the way in front of me, which was, was, was kind of cool. Don't get to see that kind of behavior very often. Um, still quite a ways away, but yeah, there's still plenty of time left. Not very hopeful, but. You never know. After sitting for a few hours and filming a little of the scenery and cattle, a pronghorn crossed the open expanse. Sitting for a long time in one place is pretty much the job description as a wildlife filmmaker. But sometimes, it pays off. Out of nowhere, a canid came bolting across the landscape, spooked by something off to my left. There are tons of coyotes in this area, and it's always fun to film them.
But as I continued filming this one, I realized something was different about it. It had a radio collar on its neck. I am filming a wolf right now. First I thought it was a coyote. When I zoomed in, I could see the radio collar around its neck. It's still quite a ways off. <laughs> Got it. It was a lot closer at first. By the time I got my wits about me, I realized I was looking at a wall, <laughs> at the coyote. Holy smokes. That's amazing. It was way the heck out there though still. I'm gonna hang out here. Paid <laughs> off, success. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. I actually did it. I came to film my wolf and that's exactly what I did. Man, that feels good. I just wish he was closer. Wow. <laughs> That's nuts. I spent, I don't know, seven years making a film about gray wolves here in Arizona, Mexican gray wolf. Never once did I see them in the wild and had a chance to film. Always had to work with a biologist to kind of be able to be in the vicinity when we were releasing wolves and back into the wild after video collaring them or something. That was the only time I saw him in the wild. Legit, just saw my first Mexican wolf. That's cool. All right, he was spooked because there's a gentleman um, setting up some tro cameras for a study that he's doing. Um, and I think he spooked it and then it came over here. I didn't know until all of a sudden I'm thinking, well, that's a coyote. And then as I punch in, I'm like, it's not a coyote, it's a wolf. So I'm hoping now that that guy scared him, he was heading this direction, maybe he'll circle back around. So maybe we'll have a better opportunity to get some better footage of him. The wind is blowing definitely not in my favor. So I feel like the champion. Terrible, terrible footage, horrible footage. But it is footage of a Mexican wolf in the wild. That is cool. Chalk that one up for victory. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, now I can focus on thinking it's better footage. This wind has got a little bit of chill on it, too. All right, I'm gonna see if I can glass him again. Okay. After filming the wolf, I knew I was going to wait this one out in hopes that it came back and crossed the meadow in front of me. Man, I'm still excited about that. Um, it's been, I don't know, probably about 45 minutes since I saw the wolf. Um, and it did exactly what every other time I've seen coyotes or wolves, at least with biologists, have ever done. Hightail it the other direction. <laughs> Um, I'm not so sure if this guy saw me, honestly. Um, he might have caught my sin, um, but there was another gentleman, like I said, setting up some trail cameras for a study that he's doing, um, part of his graduate research on actually uh, interactions between uh, like wolves and livestock. So um, that was what he was doing, he was setting up cameras. And I think um, where he was setting up a camera, I think he disturbed it and it took off running and it would have been a beautiful shot had it continued on its path. Um, by the time I got the camera ready and turned on it, it had already caught my scent, I think, and it turned up and went to the other direction. Um, but that's what I'm used to seeing wolves do is hightail it the other way. So that is cool. I am actually quite impressed that I just sat here. <laughs> no blind, nothing. That might have also factored into it. Um, but uh, I saw a wolf. 
nuts. Absolute nuts. Craziness. Um, again, way far out there, but that was that was so cool. Um, honestly, I am elated <laughs> to say the least. Um, gonna hang out here again. I'm gonna just I'm gonna wait this one out until sundown, until it's too dark to film. Um, we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll come back. You never know. Here in Arizona, cattle are allowed free range in the national forest, which is really quite interesting given that wolves, bears, and mountain lions also inhabit these areas. Studies have shown that predators like these only account for a very small percentage of the mortality rate in cattle. But the predator that accounts for the highest mortality in cattle is actually the coyote, which here and this cow is having none of it, chasing this coyote out of the area. It was pretty interesting to see this interaction, however. I just hoped that I wouldn't see anything like this with a wolf. But nonetheless, these cows most certainly know how to chase off predators whenever they can, no matter how helpless they may be. Shortly after that experience, I saw a pair of coyotes on the hillside to my left. They were certainly a fair amount smaller than the wolf I saw earlier, which also gave me a little more confidence and certainty that the animal that I saw was in fact a Mexican gray wolf. The pair of coyotes moved across the clearing to an area where the wolf that I saw earlier had come from. And I noticed right before the coyotes disappeared, something seemed to make them a little bit nervous, which I was definitely intrigued with. All right, it's getting a little cold. I actually put on my uh, down uh, jacket here. Just a moment ago, a couple of coyotes um, walked across the ridge line over here. Definitely a different type of canid. Um, now the Mexican gray wolf certainly can look small um, compared to their northern cousins, the regular gray wolf. Um, so it's not not uncommon to like misidentify them as a coyote or uh, misidentify coyotes as Mexican wolves. Um, Coloration was definitely different. Um, there are darker phases of coyotes here too. These the ones I saw were pretty light phased. Um, but that wolf um, was definitely a darker color. And I did reject this footage. And it does appear like there's a collar there. So pretty confident that was a wolf. Um, especially after seeing those coyotes. And those were a little bit smaller too. So pretty cool. Towards the evening, got about a half an hour left of sunlight, or at least before the sun hits the horizon, and then we into the dusk hours. Oh, canids! Got wolves again. I saw a pair of canids in the area where those coyotes had disappeared. However, I instantly saw these also had radio collars on their necks so I knew these were also Mexican gray wolves. It was the pack. 
They were way out there still, but they seemed intent on crossing the valley in front of me, just as I had hoped. I was honestly quite impressed that I could just sit under a tree and just simply wait them out. Now granted, a fair amount of luck certainly played into it, but spending a few minutes with them as the wolves crossed the valley in front of me was extremely amazing. As the wolves crossed towards the middle of the valley, where that cow had chased that coyote earlier, I noticed that the coyote took off running extremely fast in the opposite direction. A sure sign that the wolves were coming. Got a coyote hightailing it. He wants nothing to do with those wolves. But I didn't capture it very well, as I was trying to determine where the wolves might pop out on the landscape again. Mexican gray wolves are one of the most endangered canids on Earth. They were functionally extinct on the landscape by the 1930s and 40s, with the last one in Arizona being shot around 1970. Historically, they once inhabited most of the American Southwest, ranging all the way down into central Mexico. But today, they are only found in a small region of eastern Arizona, western New Mexico, and northern Mexico. They actually came within one female of extinction, and if it wasn't for the Endangered Species Act of 1973, the Mexican gray wolf would have gone extinct permanently in the wild. Luckily, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service hired an expert trapper in the late 70s who quite possibly caught the last remaining wild Mexican wolves on Earth down in Mexico. And only one of them was female. But thanks to a captive breeding program, the Mexican wolf was reintroduced back into the wild in 1998 in eastern Arizona. Ever since then, they have slowly been making a comeback. Today, their numbers are just shy of 200 in the US, with 84 in Arizona and 112 in New Mexico as of the end of the 2021 population survey. There are currently at least 40 in northern Mexico. So being able to spend a few minutes with these wolves as they cross the valley in front of me was truly a rare and amazing experience, as it's extremely hard to find them in the wild. Sorry I had to drop that so quickly, but I legit just had a pack of wolves run across the valley. This has been an insane day. I am so glad I moved and decided to come to this spot. They caught wind of me, they, could, they were turning and looking at me, but it wasn't changing their course of direction. And right now where they've headed to is a herd of elk. I'm not sure if they're gonna hunt because they didn't seem interested because there's a whole bunch of elk they passed by. But let me tell you, I came here to film wolves. Not only did I see the one that took off running earlier today, but I just saw three, a pack, likely one of the same ones, running across this exact place I've been sitting out and just staking out for all day. I've been here since, let's see, one in the afternoon, and it is now 7 p.m. Well worth this wait. Goodness, I cannot believe it. 
I cannot believe it. But two times, wolves from the same spot. Awesome. I didn't get a chance to film it, but there was a coyote in that little valley. I think it was playing around with the uh, um, cattle earlier and the cattle were chasing it. I did film that a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on though. And uh, that coyote was on the move. Holy smokes, was he running fast. Those wolves were coming in and uh, that's where I picked them up again in the valley as they were checking out and smelling the area where that coyote was. Uh, but I've never seen a coyote run that fast. That was hilarious. You want no part of them. By the way, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like this video, give it that thumbs up. I mean, I worked hard to get this footage of wolves and I hope you like it. I mean, it's not like amazing, real close up footage, but nonetheless, wolves on camera in Arizona, hardly anybody does that. No one has footage of these guys. Um, so that's pretty cool. So go ahead and like this video. Um, and if you like this kind of content, the more behind the scenes stuff, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. There'll be more videos like this coming down in the future. And then I thought I heard the bowling for a second. Nope. But anyways, yeah. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think. Have you seen wolves in the wild? Um, would love to hear what you guys, any ex cool experiences you guys have had with wolves um, or maybe what's your, if, or wolves your favorite animal. All right, I'm gonna listen in and hopefully get some audio of these guys howling for you all. Um, but in the meantime, keep an eye out for the next episode of Filming the Wild.